What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn about nullables, the Elvis operator and not null assertion, which are very important topics in Kotlin. And this is something that has not been available in other programming languages that are old school. And it's really powerful and very useful to make sure that your code doesn't break as quickly but you have to be careful at the same time. So before we get started, please hit the like button and subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. And well, now let's get into the content. I would like to start with a little history lesson in order to get to nullables because nullables are a type that is only necessary because of a decision of Tony Ware which was made in 1965 as part of his Algol W language development. So he invented this language and then he also invented this null reference, which now finally results in a lot of null reference exceptions or null pointer exceptions. So errors that come up quite often in programming and they are called by himself as a billion dollar mistake or his billion dollar mistake. So it was the invention of the null reference in 1965. At the time, I was designing the first comprehensive type system for references in an object oriented language, Algol W. My goal was to ensure that all use of references should be absolutely safe with checking performed automatically by the compiler. But I couldn't resist the temptation to put in a null reference simply because it was so easy to implement. This has led to innumerable errors, vulnerabilities and system crashes, which have probably caused a billion dollars of pain and damage in the last 40 years. And I believe that is quite a lot more than just a billion dollars because it takes so much time very often to figure out what the problem is. And now it's a lot easier than it was in the past. So I can imagine it was really a pain back in the day. And yeah, now there are a bunch of cool tools which make a life so much easier when it comes to null pointers or null references. So we're going to look at one of them, which are nullables in Kotlin. And if you come from a programming language like Swift, then you know this term as a optional. So in Swift, it's called optional. Here, it's called the nullable. So the idea is just that it's a null type that or a type that allows to be a null type. So just a type that allows variables to have a, z a null as its value. So not a zero, but a null. And in some programming languages, it's called nil in Objective-C, for example, but in Java and in Kotlin, it's called null. So let's go back to our code. And here I cleaned up again. So I have only my main function. So Kotlin supports nullability as part of its type system. That means that you have the ability to declare whether a variable can hold a null value or not. And by supporting nullability in the type system, the compiler can detect possible null pointer exception errors at compile time and reduce the possibility of having them thrown at runtime. And that is super useful because you can see null pointer exceptions before they happen, so to speak. So before they happen on your phone, for example, when developing apps, All right? So let's see how we can even create such situation. So first of all, I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call this one name and it's going to have the value of Dennis. And I'm going to explicitly state that this is going to be a string and it will make a little more sense once we go to the nullable types. So what I can do is I can assign a new value here. So instead of Dennis, I could rename myself and uh, my name would be Adam. But what I cannot do is I cannot assign null to my name variable. Why is that? Well, because as you can see here, null cannot be a value of a non-null type string. So if you create a variable as we've done in the past, then it's a non-null type and it doesn't accept to be empty. So it has to have a value. So what can we do if we want to have a variable that accepts null as, as a value? Well, we can make it a nullable value. So I'm just gonna call this one nullable name and it doesn't have to have this nullable at the beginning. So this is just a name that I give it. And I explicitly say again that it's a string, but now I'm adding a question mark. So this question mark now allows me to assign an empty value there. 
So I can go ahead and say nullable name is going to be null. So here I don't get a compilation error and it totally accepts it. That's because I said, okay, this will be of type string nullable or of type nullable string. So we have this new variable and I call this one nullable name and it gets a value at the beginning and then I assign null to it. But of course I could have also assigned null to it straight from the get go. Okay, that could have been an option as well. So now I have a nullable and let's have a look at the difference between the two. So what is really the idea behind all of that? Now let's say I want to go ahead and get the length of my name. Well, I can very easily do so by using name.length. Now if I go ahead and do the same thing with my nullable name, I suddenly get an error because it says only safe or non-null asserted calls are allowed on a nullable receiver of type string. So how can we fix that? Well, there is one way and there is another way. So let's go ahead with the first way, which is the old fashioned way. So this is how you would have done it in the past if you hadn't or when you didn't have the option to use nullables. So what you could do is you could check if nullable name is not equal null, only then go ahead and do that. And otherwise just return null. So that would be an option to do it. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass because in this course you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. Okay, so you can see we can now access the length if the nullable name is not null, otherwise it will return null. All right, so that's the old fashioned way. And this is not necessary in Kotlin because we have a much shorter approach to this. So instead of doing all of that here, what we can do is we can go ahead and create this variable len2 as nullable name dot length but now we add a question mark here, okay? So this line here is the same as this line over here. Now the problem of course is that our nullable name here is in fact null. So now I will get rid of this here. And as you can see, now it's not null anymore. So we can even get rid of this whole line, but I'm just gonna comment it out, okay? So this is a lot of work. You need to put in a lot of work. You need to write all of this code, right? Or you can just add a question mark to the nullable variable that you have here. And it does the same thing for you. So it says, okay, either it's gonna work. And if it works, then give it the length. So if the nullable name is in fact not null, so if there is a value in there, like in our case, it's Dennis, then just store the result in len2 and otherwise, store null in len2, all right, like here. Now you can go ahead and not only get properties of nullable variables, but also you can use methods on them. So in this case, I'm using the two lower case method on my nullable name. And if I run this, then what it will return, if it's empty, it will just return null. So otherwise it's going to return the name Dennis in my case. So there we are, it says Dennis, but let's say we make it null. So I uncomment this line here and I run it again, then, well, it's not even accepting it. So I can't even run the code. It's even not even printing it. So that's the thing about nullable variables and using the question mark here, which is the safe call operator. So now let's say, we only want to do something or print something if the variable is in fact not null. 
what we can then do, we can use the save call operator with let. So let me show you that real quick. So here, I'm just going to use the nullable name again, then the question mark. So I need to use the save call operator dot let, and then in curly brackets, the code that I want to execute only if it's not null. So only if there is a value in there, I want to execute something. So this is a very short way of doing another if else statement here. Okay, so let me run it again. And there we are, it says five, because the length of my name is five. So now let's say it's null, let's test it. And there we are, there's nothing. So it says nothing. It didn't do anything because our nullable name, in fact, was null. Now we are going to look at the Elvis operator and the not null assertion operator. And in order to do so, I first of all start by commenting out a name here because we used it and we saw how it works, right? But now what I want to do, I want to assign our nullable name to a non nullable variable. So this value here should be a non nullable, right? But I have a nullable variable here called nullable name and I need to assign it to this variable. So sometimes you have this situation and you can't get around it. So what you can do is you can use the Elvis operator in order to either assign the value that is within that nullable name variable. So let's say the variable has a name in there and otherwise it's just going to have this default value. So you use question mark colon in order to say okay if nullable is empty then please use my default value that I have here otherwise use the value that is in the nullable name so now if we print that name we will see that it should say in this case Dennis because the nullable name is in fact not null so there we are name is Dennis but now let's say we make nullable name null and we run this again then we see name is guest. Okay, so if the value is null, then it's gonna take the default value. So this one, this question mark colon here that we're using is the Elvis operator. All right, the next thing that I want to use is the not null assertion operator, which is the double exclamation mark operator that converts a nullable type to a non null type and throws a null pointer exception if the nullable type holds a null value. This is risky and you should only use it if you are 100% certain that there will be a value in the variable. So let's use it here. I'm gonna say nullable name, double exclamation mark, dot to lower case. Okay, so there is this method called to lower case and it's gonna put everything to a lower case value. So instead of guest, it's gonna say guest, for example, all right? So this here, in our case, will create a null pointer exception because we are really forcing it. And it's our own mistake because we didn't make sure that nullable name is in fact not null. So if you can see here, I'm getting a Kotlin null pointer exception in line 17, so in this line here. And this has to do with nullable name being null. So here you can see it is null at this line, so that's why we get this error. So now if it's not null, because it was assigned Dennis here, and we never change it to null, so if it's not null, it's going to print Dennis in lowercase. And there we are, name is Dennis. So now if we print that, nullable name and we get rid of this print statement that we had before. Now it should just print Dennis with a lower case. So there we are, Dennis. All right, so now you have seen how null pointer exception works and how you can force one. You also have seen how nullables work in Kotlin. And there is one last thing that I want to show you, but it will not make sense to you now. It will make more sense once we get into objects and variables. But I just want to very quickly show you that you can use 
the safe call operator in a chain. So here we are using a chain safe call, so to speak. So let's say we have a class called user and we create an object of it. There is a wife, so the user can have a wife, which is also of a class or of a type. And then this wife has an age. So what we can do is we can use a chain safe call here. For example, checking if the user is empty and then also checking if the user's wife is empty. So if it's null or not. Okay, so if that's the case, then assign a value of zero. So as I said, this only makes sense once you understand the concept of object-oriented programming. But if you come from another programming language, that will make now sense already. But otherwise, I think it makes sense to go into object-oriented programming, which we will do in the next video. So the next thing that we're going to look at is actually classes and objects. And this is a little much for now. But I just wanted to show you this in order to complete this section or this lecture for nullables in Kotlin. All right. So that's it. Let's go to the next video where we're going to check out object-oriented programming and how to create our own classes.